All right, guys, we're down here at the. Oh, oh, I am so clumsy and hungry. I am freaking starving, dude. I'm like so on the edge of tapping out. I don't know if I'm gonna last another day. Uh, I got so much ga gas in my stomach, just barfing it up. Uh, morning, guys. We are day four. Working on day four. Just going down to the creek. I'm gonna wash my knife. I didn't get a chance to wash it after I ate the porcupine yesterday. Grab some moss here. This is really good for washing your hands or your knife. So, if you just this is your first episode. We're living off the land. We're only eating wild food, and our objective is either to gain or at least maintain our body weight. So at the start, we weighed ourselves in, and at the end, we're going to weigh out. And if we lose, <laughs> there's a little bird coming to visit me. <laughs> coming for a drink. If we lose any weight at all, we lose the challenge. So this is not really like any other survival challenge. It is wilderness living and it's called wilderness living for a purpose. But it doesn't mean we can't use all the tools we want because survival is about making do Wilderness living in a modern environment is about actually living, existing long term. So you could call us modern hunter gatherers, that would be pretty appropriate, using any tools we want. It includes vehicles, it includes boats, especially in this season. Includes guns, bows, air rifles, you name it, you got it, fishing rods, tackle, everything. That might sound simple to you. And if you haven't watched any of the other series, you probably think that's about accurate. It's probably it's pretty easy. Well, it's easy to get food some of the times. It's hard to get food all of the time. And it's hard to get food consistently in order to maintain your body weight. The alewife run from the sea, I'm in Maine, from the ocean up in the rivers, was closed for the last 40 hours, but it's opened again. So that's on the docket. And then we have clams that we can go harvest. We have a three day license, which expires today, but right now is high tide. So we have to wait for the tide to go out to be able to harvest the clams. I'll take you back up to the fire. I'll show you what we have some stew, <laughs> put it that way, and some bisque, because we did not too bad the other day. We did not too bad, but we gotta keep on top of this. Some red squirrel remnants from a meal we had earlier. I'm gonna have to come up with a plan. Might do some fishing. That's always open, there's a trout stream. We don't want to get in a position where we're losing a lot of calories. And, uh, yesterday we were looking for turkey. Today we can't, but we heard lots of gobbles this morning. So they're around. So we're calling that lobster bisque, which is really porcupine bisque. So we got a porcupine yesterday and we made a broth out of it. Pretty hot. It's pretty rich in nutrients. So you just take the whole porcupine minus the quills, obviously. Prepared in a different way that I might normally, but we were short on time, so I didn't pluck it. The skin didn't have a lot of fat in it. So I just skinned it out like I would a regular animal. And then put it in whole in the pot and then just let it stew overnight. 
the, the broth is really rich. I did some wadoba spice as well. Yeah, the broth is good. Kind of tastes like groundhog. The meat itself is like a red meat. Go. Cool. Very much like roast beef. We're gonna go on an alewife run. We can get 50 uh, between the two of us, so that means we can get 50 sets of eggs and 50 cents of sperm. We've already done this, make soup. It's really the only opportunity we have. We might, we're talking about doing some fishing maybe. We have to get the canoe to be able to do that, go do some bass fishing. Chris said, as far as he knows, it's about a 50-50 chance that we'll actually catch a bass. I don't like those odds. I like 100. I'm gonna hang out here, do some foraging, and uh, try and build that table I said I was gonna build yesterday, and see if I can't get some greens and stuff. Or yeah. some like, uh, some cattail shoots, some fiddleheads, stuff like that. That'll be good. Yeah. Then later I'll, uh, we'll probably all head out for clams, right? We got okay. our license. The hardest part of this is really, I'm not in an environment that I know. I don't know where all my resources are. That's why Chris is coming in really handy for me because he can take me around. Otherwise it would just be a nightmare. I have to relearn every area. So familiarity with where the resources lie and how to get them is huge in wilderness living. You gotta know where they are before you need them. Our, uh, these alewives that are coming up out of the sea, out of the ocean, and they're spawning. So the lobstermen, which is technically us, if you saw that video, uh, use them for bait. And they're fairly easy to net and totally legal to dip net. I don't see any there. I'm gonna make sure that they're actually still running. Well, we're having a hard time here. Uh, trying to figure out a technique to catch these. It was a whole lot easier two days ago before they changed the rules on us. You can't do this for the last two days. So we got a few in the bucket just from walking up. Now we're gonna try to do dip net in our pool here. Um, we found the first time we did it, we were successful. And then every other time we did it after that, we kind of get spooked more and more. Um, we'll try it here and see what happens. Okay. Well, we're running out of time, so Chris and I are gonna clean up a couple fish, and then we're gonna go clamming. I mean, we probably got 25. I would have preferred to get 50, but it is what it is. We're working with one net. Clean these up anyway. Low tide's about to happen now. We're gonna grab uh, as many clams as we can, hopefully better than last time. I think we will, because we learned how to do it last time, so now we have a better idea. So this here is the gold we're after. That has got to be as many calories as you would get from a chicken egg. So we're going to harvest these out. I'm going to try to find you one with sperm in it. I'll be right back. So the one Chris was cleaning is a male, so it's got milt. I saw white stuff in there. You guys see that? Open it up here. It's got two sacks, two milt sacks, sperm sacks. So we've been making soup out of this. I was hoping to get 50. I was hoping Zach would come too and we can get 75 of these. Would have been a stretch to get 75 given the conditions today. But that makes a beautiful and very rich soup. So what we're hoping to do is that Zach will actually be able to add some wild edibles and make a proper soup out of it. What you do is grab some of this knotweed here. This stuff's really good. It's very, uh, very sweet. The new growth, anyway, as it gets older, gets grosser. There's no reason we can't grab a snack for later. We grab the tender shoots. This is a invasive species. It grows all over the place, but obviously originates from Japan. It's always good to stay balanced, I guess, but uh, obviously we're after those macros right now. The macro calories, the micro calories, I don't concern myself too bad on the wilderness living challenge because if I'm eating the whole animal I'm typically getting all the micros anyway from the organs and such. Mud flats, I can't even think anymore. My brain is totally fried. Um, yeah, this is where the tide goes out and the clams stay in the dirt. 
I am freaking starving, dude. I'm like so on the edge of tapping out. I don't know if I'm gonna last another day. And I'm not joking, I'm not making it up, not being dramatic. I have eaten like two things of broth today, and that's it. And I gotta try to dig holes. I got so much ga gas in my stomach, just barfing it up. So we gotta find out where we should dig. I don't know. I don't know, I need something. I wish I could eat those fish right now. Do you want to go over there by the trees there? Sure. You should have parked over there. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm not going to make it if I have to walk. Drag my butt over there. All right, guys, we're down here at the... Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I'm so clumsy and hungry. I never fall. But I am starving. Well, let's, we'll try here for a bit. If not, we'll make our way around the corner and see. And I think the holes won't show up as easily in this kind of slick stuff, right? Yeah. I'm feeling so, pretty good though. Yeah, let's give it a shot here. Okay. There's probably a better spot over there though. I mean, I don't know. You wanna keep walking? I don't know. Work our way back. We wanna try over in this sandy stuff over here? Yeah, let's give it a look. All right. We can always, this can be our last. I apologize guys for doing a really bad job of filming this because I'm not just I'm just hungry I want to eat so and I'm still not going to eat after this I'm still not going to be able to eat for a few hours till we cook it so this is what you get sorry but doing my best here now well, it's going not too bad better than the first time I did it but I'm still digging on an empty stomach I want to talk you guys through a clam dig. I'm by no means an expert. What we're looking for, that little hole there is the snout of the clam. <laughs> I know nothing about the anatomy. It's the breathe tube, I guess. They stick that tube up and they breathe. So what we're doing is digging around it, eight inches around, 10 inches around. Usually it'll squirt up at you to expel some water at your face. And then dig around that. It'll retract the little snout thing down and back inside the clam as you dig down. You'll get a good idea of what it is, but the trick is not to crush it. So as you're digging down, you have to make a room for it because if you, if you push it and pry, it'll press against the sand and it'll crush the shell. I mean, you can still eat it. It's just, it's gonna be full of grit. And we ate some already that were full of grit and they weren't good. So you gotta go careful. So I'll try to show you on video what happens here. So there you go, that's how you do it without barely, only barely crushing the shell. Hey right, guys, you gotta, you gotta see this, what we figured out. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, you gotta get it ripping correctly. Watch all the clams under here. Right there, right there. One there, one there, one there. Keep on. Two. Oh. Everywhere, they're gone in. Right here, right at the, oh that one's dead. No it's not. Yeah, that, was, that one's dead. There's another one right here, right here. Look at that, sticking out. Look at that, sticking out. Look at that, another one sticking out. Another one sticking out. They're all over the place here. Dude, there's like four right there. Easy pickings, man. Easy pickings. Now we got this thing figured out. Woo. Oh, there, there's one at the surface here. Look at, we're just gonna grab that one there. That's an easy one. Another one here, we can't get that one out yet. We'll have to dig it out. <laughs> There's a steep learning curve on everything, but once you get over that hump, man, your level of knowledge, expertise, living off the land pays off. We are about a couple inches from the top here. This is all the way full. So we're gonna get our two packs in no time and get back and have a feast, a huge feast. Dude, pumped. What are you gonna do with that meshing? I'm gonna bring it up to the trash. Yeah, good idea. 
Another load. Two. Two on a shovel. Okay. <laughs> one more. One more. <laughs> it's like a production. I don't one even more. need a shovel. Another one. Do it. You just pop bubbles up. I'll grab them. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that one. Chris is going to pull it up and we're going to bring it to the trash, do our part to clean the environment up and uh, restore this flat again to the clams that will replace the ones we're taking. Obviously, we're only taking ones of certain size and that's so we make sure that there's a healthy population. So we can't keep anything under two inches and that makes sure there's always more clams. Proper management, guys. So Chris is going to get this off the beach. You're a good man. Yes. This is one heavy pail. Oh. Bring the clams over. There's a little bit of water over here. And we're going to do our best to clean them out as best possible because last time we ate clams, it was so much sand in the... It was, it was bad. It was really bad. Like, it was to the point where I wasn't sure if I should keep eating. Rub, like, grind the enamel off your teeth. It's a stone pestle, and they would grind food in at corn or whatever they had. They would grind off all the enamel of the teeth and they would start to rot because enamel is what protects your teeth, right? I don't want to do that. I like my teeth. Um, and they had measured that they would, by the end of their lifetime, by doing all the grinding, they would have they would have eaten like an entire rock of worth of sand from the from their pestle. But I mean, hey, probably wear your teeth out eating like crunchy corn too if you didn't have it pestled. So I mean, it's a trade-off, right? Chris just winching the bucket out. Like we didn't do this last time. We had so much grit in there. So we're gonna take some time to do it right. You gotta learn it. Or somebody could tell you how to do it. That would be the better way. I'd love to learn from an expert and we pretty much did, but uh, kind of on the fly, especially when you're doing survival. But I guess, you know, some people did that. You trial and error and bang it out if you had to or you died, as simple as that. Of course, we did break some of them. That's a good sized one right there. Well, that's a mess of clams. That's a whole five gallon pail full. And if you take the shell off, there's still a pile of meat in there and the shell is a very small percentage of it. So that's basically a five gallon pail of meat. We combine that with our alewives, take out the sperm and the eggs, and we're gonna have a proper meal tonight full of proteins, fats, but no carbohydrates. But thankfully, I've been supplementing that. Let's wash these guys up, throw them back in the pail, and we'll be back to camp after dark. As per usual, another busy day harvesting. So now we get to find out what Zach was up to all day. He said he wanted to hang back and build. I can appreciate that, he's a builder. I'm a forager, hunter, fisherman. I think Zach obviously does some of that and I obviously do some of the building. But when I'm hungry, I don't do building. So we're gonna zip back to camp. It'll be well after dark by the time we get there. And we'll cook this stuff up, go to bed with a full stomach. And tomorrow I think we're gonna be looking for turkeys. I'm pretty excited for that. We got some bead on some turkeys. We've been doing quite a bit of research and we think we got some lined up. So we've been working at this for a bit. We can pop off a turkey. It's really a game changer. It's gonna keep me in here. I've been struggling daily with whether or not I'm gonna continue with the Wilderness Living Challenge because to be honest, it's been a huge, huge struggle for me this year. Some modern, modern food foraging machine right there. <laughs> All right guys, we're back at camp. Let's check out what Zach's got going on here. He's already showed off a little bit of his uh, cattail shoots roots so that'll be a nice snack we get some fiber in us and some carbohydrates i'm loving some carbohydrates at this time but uh i guess he's been working hard on the his shelter putting it together what you got going on here so i built a bigger fireplace with a bigger heat shield and uh hopefully wicking uh heat up faster drafting it causing it to go out the chimney and be less smoky and over here there's a tunnel that goes all the way outside oh dude so that's one of those uh what's it called like a breathing 
yeah, yeah. tunnel. So it comes, I can feel the air coming through right here. Put your hand there. You can feel like the cold air. Yeah. You feel that? Yeah, so it's like a dra uh, draft. It's yeah, sucking air yeah. from sucking air in? Yep, it's sucking air in from outside. And then I even covered it outside with a little bit of a shield so the rain that comes off the roof won't go in. And it uh, comes right through, fills in here, and causes it to draft up and out of the room, but much, uh, much better. Yeah, I noticed it's not much a smoking better. here. Yeah, yeah, it's nicer. I mean, it only got a low fire going. That may always makes it harder. The bigger the fire, the more it drafts out. But the bigger the fire, the more the more chance you have at, uh, well, torching the place. <laughs> right. So. And what's the, is the idea from that to uh, keep smoking the fish? Well, yeah, keep smoking the fish and, uh, you know, just to make it more habitable. Because, like, right now, it's, like, it's cold enough to, you see our breath, so it's looking a little smoky in here. But uh, the smoke level was, like, here. And I, by doing this, it feels like it's a lot more like up here. Yeah, it's definitely so, more livable in here yeah. with that fire going. That's yep. pretty cool. And then uh, how's the fish doing? Did you try, try eating any of these yet? No. No? No, I was just about to uh, I was just about to cut, make some cuts on them and get some more smoke onto them to make sure that they don't spoil. Yeah. And then you guys showed up. Oh, right on. So, cool. I'll probably do that now while we guys are... Putting, well, we're putting the clams together right on yeah let's get eaten yeah let's are you hungry it. i am so hungry are you <laughs> well i mean i'm like i'm i'm actually okay yeah because i've had like seven or eight cups of the uh the porcupine lobster bisque they got we got going on out there and i even topped it up with a little more water so i'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good but i could totally just clam up right now clam right. it clam, clam it down clam up man. clam, <laughs> clam out some of those clams we got were the size of my hand, so if you put two of those together, it's about the size of your stomach. <laughs> most, most of them are not that big, but there's a lot of them that are that are really, really, really big. Well, I just diluted the ever-loving daylights out of it. it you, you know what it tastes like? It tastes just like crawfish stew that I had down in Texas, like, every morning. It, okay. it's, it's so... No, no, it's, no porcupine flavor? Not anymore? at all, no. no. So part of my experiment this year is I'm adding some man-made or man-gathered or machine-gathered corn massa flour. I'm going to see if that makes a difference in the way out and also how I feel. So I'm adding, as I've said repeatedly, one cup or 440 calories of massa corn flour. So I'm making cakes, put those on the fire, and we'll see how it makes me feel and how it helps me in my way out. <sighs> so take over here and dump it. I'm going to dump it by Chris's tent and bring the raccoons in. Here we go, bucket o clams. Add some adobo spice. You can get that at Zach Fowler's website. Link will be down below. It's a joint venture between Zach and I. I'm getting the whole main experience, 100%. That's good stuff. I'm gonna load up on that. We're gonna eat as much as I can to the verge of sickness, and then I'm gonna go to bed and do it all over again. Think you guys could do it all over again? Day after day? Just eating wild food? Would you want him? Do you appreciate your store bought food? I do when I'm done immensely. At the end of the challenge, you guys have to stick around when we out. See if we won the challenge or not. See if this makes a difference. Hoping it does. But it's only 440 calories. We're burning, I don't know, thousands of calories every day. Constantly moving, constantly filming. It's a lot of work. The thing is, they're not that hard. It's pretty easy to collect clams, and I think it's like one of the probably go-tos if you were trying to survive, especially in Maine. Eggs and sperm. Looking to add quite a few calories before I go to sleep and let my body process them while I'm sleeping. These fish have been preserved really well in here because of that. Smoke preserves all sorts of things. So I'm gonna try to finish this up on the fire because they're not cooked all the way through and we'll give it a taste. I want, I'm really curious because, did I tell you all the reports said that people smoke them? That's pretty much how they ate them historically. I mean, it's not a very choice food, but uh, hey, it's what we had early on. So that's what we, that's what we ate at the beginning of the challenge. We ate a lot of it. Oh, I'm gonna burn my hand first. Oh, I smoked my eyes out. Oh, brutal. Zach, you gonna give it a go? Yeah, I figured we're gonna go for it. <laughs> I remember there being bones, but I think I was just like, 
I was just nibbling on them and then like spitting and you know I was in the outdoors and it wasn't like trying to eat it in your kitchen where you're like ah what do you do with all these bones and and stuff so yeah I'm curious to see if the smoking makes it any better they look super oily yeah so you can't really tell with the night vision but they're the amount of oils coming off them is oh that rock's really big off yeah maybe the rock's the way to go yeah. you don't have to worry about us smoking guys see it's cooked and meat's falling off the bones that's a, on that side that's a good sign i think the, the problem is obviously all those pin bones that don't belong in the spine yeah that's the real trick. they're just they're floating right the pin bones yeah they're i just, don't i don't remember if we showed it earlier or not but it's a problem we tried to show it but they're so small they're just like and they're they're just like a y fork too there's these little pin bones with a little y on each end oh i just jump in zach's shelter here so i can try it out see how if it's any good and i need my flashlight a little bit just to make sure i don't eat any of the bones here i don't know how i should eat this you think i should stick that in there there's a whole pile of pin bones in there still I mean, I'll give it a go. I've already tried it, try it again. I'm just gonna eat it like you would say if it was good to eat. I'm curious to see if the bones are just gonna kinda mash up. No, I don't really taste the bones in my mouth. It's just super oily. Like surprisingly oily. The bones don't really bother me. And I was able to swallow it. That's amazing. That's the way to do it. Smoke it. Cook it on the fire. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I know. We just landed a mess of fish. <laughs> yeah, we just made a mess of fish edible. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... We thought these were throwaways and now we have a whole three racks of fish. Yeah. And it's really, really oily. That's pretty sweet. You can see the bones, but they're not bothering me. I don't feel like I need to pick them out at all. Crazy. That's a huge score. You just eat this whole thing, including the fins. Yeah, man, fins and all. I'm not sure to eat the spinal cord out of it, but that's easy enough to pick out. It should just come off the back here. And all we'll be left with is a little pin bones here. Oh, I did get one, one rib bone. Another piece of meat here. This fish is super oily. I wonder if it's actually been like okay. You know, the fish cakes and all that stuff, because we ground all this up. Yeah? What do you mean? It's been okay? Well, maybe it was like giving me enough calories. You know, because I thought, I thought it was all just lean meat, but it's, it feels really greasy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, when like, the smoking, it must cause the oils to come out more. Like, look how slippery my fingers are. You don't get that from yeah. a normal fish. No. Without all. without olive oil, like, it's my fingers are just slippery. They slide. Right? Here's the head. The head skull. Let's see if they still go. You ate the head? Yeah. Because it was so it was so burnt. I know. <laughs> it's burnt. <laughs> it is. Well, you can eat the head. That I was I, that's surprising. That's one way to get ahead in life. <laughs> <laughs> There's three ways to get ahead in life. No? What's, what's that? Oh, I'm not gonna explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Zach's getting my jokes. I don't know if I get it. I just know that it's, I don't want to get it. <laughs> you don't want to get it. I think we're back on track. I'm feeling a lot better now. If you get a turkey, it'll be all the better. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's like sludge. It's going to be milky sludge. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes about this whole YouTube thing. 
gray oatmeal. I know you can't see the color, but it's just gray. But it tastes fantastic. It tastes like chicken eggs. Whew. I get some of my beard. The real test, I think, is if I wake up in the middle of the night hungry, it means I burned more calories during the day than I was able to consume at the end of the day. Keep watching, we just started here. I wanna go back to the start and have a check out. If you watch the whole video, right down full stop. I really appreciate you guys helping me keep this channel going. And it's only, it's only because of you. If you guys want me to keep making these videos, then just keep watching them. Simple as that. If you feel like sharing them, share them. If you feel up like subscribing, subscribe. Whatever. I mean, appreciate you subscribe, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. See you guys next one.